Hey everybody out there, my name is Dragnix, and this is Fuego. $9.99 comes out on the Steam Store today. It is an indie-style puzzle game slash competitive multiplayer game where you play as outlaws trying to get the gold from the banks. But before I begin, I want to make sure you guys know this key was obtained from the developer for the purposes of critical review. That won't affect my opinion in any way, but you guys should know that because of FTC guidelines, as well as the whole morals thing, you know? Let's get right into it. I'm going to start with the puzzle mode here, and in particular, I'm going to go into some of the mechanics that the game has, as well as what the puzzle mode does well and does poorly at this point. Now, the idea here is that you place your bandits on the field. Here I've got two wolves who are able to fire in two separate directions. Now, each wolf here is able to fire in a specific set of directions based on their arms, but you can rotate them as needed, as you see here. But you can't rotate one or the other. It's always going to be at the same angle as you see down below. Now, I'm trying to defeat all these banks here. Basically, I'm trying to break into all these banks, and I have to get all the money in order to complete the puzzle level. So you see here, I go into the shootout, and both of them fire. Take out one, take out two, three, and four. And there we go. All the money is collected and I have completed the level in question. All right, on to the next level. This time around, I'm given three guns at one time and two people to place. Now, what's good about the puzzle aspect of the game is that it doesn't necessarily show you the easiest solution at first. Here, I've got the three with two on one side and one on the other, and it seems like, okay, I'll fire th this way. This makes a lot of sense. But then I go grab the other guy, and I'm like, okay, well, let's see here. I know he's going to blow a bullet into the other one. I got to be careful, though, because one, I can't hit that chicken. The chicken will take the bullet, and thus I have six banks here, three guns on each side. That's a little bit of a problem. So obviously, I need to figure out exactly the best way of doing this. And in the puzzle aspect of the game, that rather works rather well. The puzzles are set up basically to really test your idea of sort of spatial awareness as well as really using your resources wisely. One of the nice things about it is that it doesn't give a hint system per se, but at the start of the level you'll get a little message and that message is actually rather important because if you think about it, it will actually help you a lot. And I like the little hint that it gave, but not necessarily sort of, you know, throwing the solution in front of you at that point. Now, as you see here, I'm struggling. Like, okay, I'm obviously not seeing the solution here at this point. Now, I'm obviously fixated on the two and one here and then trying to figure out, wait a minute, how do I do this other three? And so I start moving characters around and start figuring it out. Now, you're probably wondering, well, wait a minute, how the hell do one person have three guns in their hand? Well, they actually did that rather well. So if you look at the character art, for example, for the four gunner, you've got a tortoise and a, I believe a hare in this. In this case, you have a raccoon and it looks like maybe a snake? I'm not exactly sure. So I try it out here, one, two, three. So here we go, one, two, three, four, five, and six. There we go, all of them are defeated, no problems whatsoever. Was able to keep everyone alive, which is always a good thing, but on to the next level. Now, each bandit has his own priority, and that is based on the number of guns he has. So, for example, if you have one gun, like the bear, you're going to go first. And so, that does make a difference at times. So, when you get combinations on things, in, like, for example, the um, chickens here, well, obviously it's going to be a problem, because it, what, bullet's going to hit a chicken, so obviously that's going to be a major problem for me to be able to hit that bank. Unless if I put the two here first to open up a hole for, yes, you got guessed it, my two bandit. And so we see it in action here as I get it lined up just right. And the bear and the, I guess the bird, fire. Come on, guys. There you go. Fire, fire, knocks a hole open, and then there we go. So there is some puzzle solving in that aspect. Now, it is simplistic, but as you go along, it gets a little bit more difficult as you're gonna see here in a second. Now the game starts to introduce more complicated scenarios as I mentioned before, and now we have other bandits to deal with. Now for example, I got a three shooter here, but four houses. How am I gonna be able to take all the gold? Well, it's because of the other bandits. You got one bandit here pointing to this house, you got this bandit pointing to this one and this one, and then you got the left hand bandit pointing to the top, the top right, and the bottom right 
banks. Now, I realize that I can't just hit the banks. I gotta hit the bandits. Because the bandits, if they get gold, if you shoot them after they get it, well, the gold is yours then. And that sort of sets up the multiplayer aspect of the game as well. So now I gotta figure out exactly what is the best configuration to take out all these bandits. And it, again, isn't obvious. The way the spacing and the level design in question works out, it's obviously not necessarily easy to decide, wait, this bandit goes where exactly? Because you see all this open space in the middle, for example, and you think, okay, it's gotta be in something like that, right? Well, no. In fact, it's actually completely on the side in this case when I finally figure it out. Now, one thing I will say about the controls that I do not like, okay, and we see here, I finally figured it out. So I realized that I can point the guy here, shoot these guys, and be able to take their gold, and let's watch. And here we go, our raccoon, and I guess it's a weasel or something. But one, okay, so he took that gold. The two shooter goes, he takes one, takes the other gold. And the three, take his gold, take his gold, he gets that gold, but I get his gold, and he barely misses me. Accuracy is very important in this game because it can sometimes be pinpoint in how very precise you need it to be. Now, aesthetic-wise, the game's art, especially with the character drawings, is rather good. As you see it with these wolves here, I really like the style that the game is going for it. Yeah, there are a lot of whites and grays and you know, you it's almost like Arizonian, you know, Mexican, like that sort of south southwestern of the United States area, but it does the job rather well. I do wish I would see a little bit of the character in question when I'm placing them, as you sort of lose the fact that okay, this is a wolf I'm placing, but I can understand why they did that. Now, in terms of controls, this is played with the keyboard. There is no controller support from what I see. It does sort of lend itself to the mouse rather well, and I think a controller would be problematic, especially in multiplayer, as I'll get into later on. But, you know, it would be a little bit nice to be able to see that option. One thing I will note, though, is that when rotating your character in question, when you want to rotate, in full screen mode, if you go outside of the screen bounds, you stop rotating and that gets a really annoying, especially on the edge, to really want to see exactly what's going on. As you pull out your mouse when rotating, you'll see how your character is firing, which is rather important in those sort of accurate se sections of the game. Now you're seeing here, I'm trying to figure out exactly how to deal with these both these bandits. You got the four bandits on the side. I know I have to kill one of them, but I also know that I don't really have the sort of arsenal to be able to deal with both. And so I'm hoping here that he just doesn't hit me. And let's find out if the turtle, tur the turtle squad hits me here. One, two, one, one, and no. So they missed, good enough. All right, we're gonna do one more puzzle and then I'm gonna move on at this point. When the game's puzzles shine, it's when it's not very obvious the puzzle solution is. Think first, shoot later. That's telling you that maybe you should take a little bit of thought of where the bullet is traveling. And in this case, you're gonna see exactly what that means. I'm not gonna spoil it for you and you'll see the solution anyway. One thing I will say is that there's only 60 puzzles here, and, and that's actually sort of disappointing to me, because I think the puzzle aspect works better than the multiplayer aspect in the long run. I feel like I'm really being challenged here. The multiplayer aspect, as I'll get to, does still have good elements to it, but it, I feel like it pales compared to the puzzle aspect of the game, where it really makes you think at this point. Even though you're playing sort of a chess match against um, another opponent in question. Here, I feel like you're playing a chess master against yourself. Now, as you see here, what's gonna happen is that the people in question are all gonna timely take their bullets. And so, okay, he takes that guy's, he takes that guy's, he takes that guy, he takes that guy, and of course, I'm going to reap the benefits of everything else. All right, let's look at the multiplayer aspect of the game. Did not play online with anybody, but um, I played with the AI in question. I think the developers offered to play online. I just am trying to do so many things at this point. I didn't get around to it. Um, but in terms of the AI in question, it'll show you some mechanics of the game. Now you get four pieces to place, and these are procedurally generated levels. Now they're pretty random in question. There will be banks. There will be things that you'll reflect off of at times, but in terms of variety there, it's not necessarily the greatest in question. Now. 
what's interesting here is the fact that you both have the move at the same time. What do I mean by that? So you both place the piece at the same time. So even though it looks like I'm going one, two, one, two, no, it's turn one, we both place them at the same time. In fact, if we both place them in the same spot, they'll kill each other immediately. They'll be like, oh, whoa, shit, and then blow up at the same time. Now, the question here is that how do you play out this chess mass? Like, for example, here, I use my one shot to get an advantage on this three shot guy that I think was gonna take, you know, a good chunk of the, the banks here. So you gotta really figure out, okay, hold on a second, I got this four guy, do I protect him by, you know, place him in closer to the house, or do I put him far away, maybe protecting him in that way? What interestingly develops here is the risk and reward mechanics, which are surprising here. You don't necessarily see it at the first glance, but as you get closer to houses, for example, the closer you get to a house, the more likely you're going to take that house. The reason being is that everyone fires at the same rate. The closer you are, the first your bullet's going to hit that house, but then you have to realize that. And so your opponent may get, you know, sort of cue on that and take that guy to take out last so they get all the rewards from that dude. And so now the question becomes, okay, do I take that house? Do I take that house? Hold on a second. What is he doing with those two guys? The chess match begins, and while you don't necessarily know what your opponent is going to do, I feel like it is balanced. Now, unfortunately, the one thing I will say is that the matches play very quickly, but they always play out, I don't want to say relatively the same, but there's not enough variety in terms of the sort of mechanics. I like, for example, the reflect mechanic. You can have a church bell um, that's in the uh, arena, which you can reflect off of. Okay, that was cool. I want to see a little bit more like that. Maybe, you know, a little bit more um, like elements that are like, you know, maybe something that splits the bullet into two or something, or, you know, gives you an extra bandit to place after the match is ended. Something like that. I think that in the long run, that will help the game over time. I do like the fast pace of the game though. I think that some puzzle games in terms of multiplayer aspects fail to realize that, you know, a qu keeping your opponents, you know, quick in terms of, you know, quick thinking really goes to what exactly the game needs. As you see here, I do pretty well in terms of being able to kill bandits in question, get two bandits dead on their side, but I get the gold in question. So, hey, good enough. Now, Overall, Fuego is $10, and I think it does deliver in terms of the puzzle aspect of the game. And if you especially like multiplayer aspects of puzzle games, I think this does sort of execute well in terms of the chess mechanics in question. Do I want to see more from the game? Yes, of course. But I feel like even with its simplistic form, if you get somebody who's really like, you know, wants to play a quick game with you, I think this works rather well. This game is, you know, good for a quick like 15 minutes of, you know, 15 matches of, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three, and making you figure out exactly what's going on. Well, you know, sort of giving you a little bit of luck element to it like if you place your three bandits you're hoping maybe for like a one bandit to take out one of their guys maybe sometimes that works maybe sometimes it doesn't but of course your opponent can counter you at this point so i do really think the game does well in that retrospect now overall it's solid does it necessarily draw you entirely to the game in terms of its aesthetic in terms of its you know overall puzzle mechanic it could use a little bit more flash but honestly it's solid base is what I can recommend here. And at $10, you don't get a lot of puzzle games that give you an online multiplayer aspect to it. Now, I will say that I wasn't able to test the online multiplayer aspect of it, and I don't know how the servers, or the, I shouldn't say servers, uh, maybe, um, you know, peer-to-peer -peer or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. But I don't know how that's gonna work in terms of online capabilities. So check out some other reviews before you make a, a decision based on that. All right, this is Dry Nick signing out. Now, I do have an extra key for this game to give away. I, I still need to catch up on the other keys I need to give away, including that giveaway that was like over two months ago. I, there's a lot of stuff going on, guys, and I apologize for that. But I do have an extra key, key to give away. If you leave a comment below about what you think of Fuego, what you would like to see added, you know, just some general comment about Fuego and exactly what it has to offer, I will randomly choose from the comments section below. In addition, I always take feedback, so if you see anything that you want to see different on the videos, I would appreciate it if you leave it in the comments below. 
And if you liked this video, you know, you can hit that like button and it helps it, you know, get a little bit more visibility as well as, you know, maybe like that Steam review you might have seen it on in the description below. Again, subscribe if you want to see more content like this and I will see you all later. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you like this content and want to see more of it, you may want to hit that subscribe button on the left hand side. If you like this video and want to see more of this content, take a look at this video on the left hand side as well. And if you missed my last video, take a look at the right hand side. Once again, thanks for watching and keep on gaming.